It is Monday, September 29th, 2025, and the Chicago White Sox are a disappointing 80 and 82. But guess what? They made the playoffs. The Chicago White Sox in 2025 are the worst team in MLB history to make the playoffs. They beat out the 2005 San Diego Padres, who won the NL West at 82 and 80, which also means the White Sox are the first team with a losing record to make the MLB playoffs. And now, The Padres had a Pythagorean expected win total of uh, 77 games. The White Sox are at 84. So with a few rolls of the ball, this wouldn't have happened. But it does. Uh, It seemed as if nobody wanted to win this division, including Chicago. Towards the end of September, the White Sox were three to four games up on the Guardians and the Twins. The Guardians make it a bit closer, coming in in one game within the White Sox. Um... Chicago, again, around 500 as they have been throughout the year, and that would figure into their 80 and 82 record. The one thing that is uh, devastating for the White Sox is that they were 14 and 28 in one run games. Well, I guess not devastating because they did make the playoffs, but um, this is certain to come up. They were also awful on the road, good at home. Um, just a really weird season. You see the pitching numbers, the best bullpen in the American League, third in the AL and runs allowed. First in zone rating, um, but on the offensive side, that's why we fired our hitting coach, folks. Um, not a good season. 12th in the AL and runs scored. This was pretty on par with the preseason predictions that I said were going to be wrong. Um, fifth in home runs in the AL, fifth in walks, but just a not, a not a good offensive team. Um, we look into the pitching staff. I did make some changes. We cut Matt Moore, just because I wasn't going to include him on the um, playoff roster. And I had Andrew Abbott coming off the injured list after missing basically the whole stretch run in September. But he was good this year. Um, The three starters will be Cease, Bueller, and Giolito, just how I'd like it. Um, I also made another cut, didn't I? What else did I cut? Well, I sent Dingler down, brought up Garver. He was hurt for six weeks, almost as soon as I traded for him. I had Hackenberg up, but I liked what Harry Ford was doing for us in the big leagues. Um, So he's going to be in the playoffs for us. Um, Then there's one other move I made. I did bring up Jonathan Stever. Um, Terrell Tatum will be out for the rest of the year. So Lloyd L. Chappelle will be the lefty bat replacing him. Um, Luis Robert missed that time. Uh, Came back just fine. Mao Yahuna is also at the big league club, as is Moda. I, I know I did something else um, that I would like to show you. Maybe? Who knows? Anyways, that's what the team's looking like right now. Um, canning is bad for us in the uh, 31 and two-thirds in- innings he pitches after we trade for him. Uh, Christian Mania is very good, 167 ERA, 2.5 R war. He'll be in the rotation next season, depending on how um, the veterans shake out. Alex Lang is a rough end of the year, ERA-wise, um, but good FIP. Uh, Josh Spores, okay with us. Brandon Williamson comes up, pitches bad, ERA-wise, good FIP. Um, Yenier Cano, good all year, serviceable. He had a good two th- two seasons with us. Um, he'll go to arbitration next year. I might I might bring him back. Alberto Mota um, will be our closer of the future. He was good for us in ten and a third innings, 087 ERA. I'm very excited for him. Framber Valdez just requested a trade <laughs> or at least to be kicked off the team. I like no player in real life would not would decline to be on a playoff team in September. I don't care what your role is. You weren't good enough to be a starter. He evens out with the war, um, but a good R-War season, 3 4 7 ERA and 122 innings pitched. He was a long man starter, hybrid for us. Um, and then Jonathan Stever comes up and doesn't pitch well. I'm a bit worried about him. He's got great ratings, but he's just struggled at the major league level after being really good in AAA for the past few years. Uh, on the lineup side, Luis Robert comes back, uh, plays in 126 games, now is fragile. So we have him for the next two years. Uh, I'm not going to think about moving his contract unless it gets really bad, but next year would be his last year, and if he struggles, we don't pick up the team option. If he does well, we do. Pretty simple um, arithmetic with him. Oscar Colas finishes the season hot and in left field, 
plays good defense. Really good bounce back year for Colas after struggling last season. Um, he heated up June, July, August, September. Really good bat. He'll continue to be, hopefully, for us. Ryan McMahon, 2.8 war. Um, not as good with the glove this year as he was last year, but still at only um, like $8 million we're paying him. A three-war season from our third baseman is good, as, as well as his 23 homer pop from McMahon. Um, crochet in that trade was awful for the Rockies, so I'd consider it a win. Also, I want to check in. Um, we traded Eloy for Framber, and Eloy did this <laughs> in the last year of his deal Certain to, to decline that team option. Negative 1.9 war for Eloy Jimenez in his one season in Queens. Another good move we made, um, not keeping him around. Benny Montgomery has to play a little bit of center field towards the end of the year. He was passable there. Good enough with the bat. I'd like to see the strikeout rate go down, but 17 homers in his uh, rookie season. 434 plate appearances. I certainly didn't expect him to play that much this season, but he does. And at age 23, he's our right fielder of the future. Um, Colas also hits 26 bombs. Willie Adames improves towards the end of the season. Um, hits a little bit better in August. Well, not in August, but in September and July to raise that OPS plus up. He finishes the year playing shortstop and does admirably well. He was a gold glove caliber second baseman. We shift him to shortstop after cutting Nick Ahmed. Uh, and he fields well enough to keep us above water. A war and a half, good enough for him, sure. Mitch Garver, like I said, missed some time for us. He only had 53 plate appearances, 10 plate appearances in the two games he played, or three games he played after coming off the injured list, but he hit well. Um, 321 Babips high for him for his career, but a 238, 396, 405 slash line, albeit in such a small sample size, is, is very good, and I'm excited to see what he does uh, in the playoffs, I think that he was a good pickup for us, only surrendering uh, Jalen Beeks, who was bad down the stretch for the Astros, and it allowed us to open up some spots um, for some younger pitchers that we needed to bring up. Uh, Adam Frazier isn't great with us, but he's a, a bench bat at this point in his career. 137 plate appearances, 98 WRC+, plus, doesn't field well at second base. I don't care. It was a fine trade to bring him and Canning in for what we sent out. Westberg and Caglione. Uh, Caglione's done. He'll retire, and, and Westberg made his debut for us and didn't impact anything. Wilfred Varis, um, we checked in. I, I don't know how, how many, uh, what his value was when we checked in in July, but he was terrible uh, in July, August, and September. He hit a rookie wall. I still kept him up just because he was an all-star, and I'm not going to send him down. Um, but he was very bad to the end of the year for us, to the point where he was about to become a an, an, uh, below-average um, offensive player for us. Right now they haven't been left. I don't know why. I'd rather have him play third or set, whatever in the playoffs. West Cath comes back up, um, and if we look at his splits in the major leagues, sent him down in uh, May, comes back up for a few at-bats in July, August, and September, and 142, 145 WRC plus in those two months. Very welcome in about um, 100 plate appearances for Kath. Uh, he'll be back next season in a similar role to what we envisioned at the start. Again, Andrew Vaughn, even more of a disappointing finish to the year, actually is a below average hitter after an MVP season. 0.5 war for Vaughn, um, wasn't even good defensively. I don't know what happened other than this Babbitt falling, but his Babbitt was around the same number in 2023, uh, and he was an all-star, so or all-star level. Um, obviously, we're going to keep him around, but as a first baseman, you got to hit. Did hit 24 homers, but he's entering like Eloy territory where it's like, yeah, you're hitting the ball really hard, but are you being successful? Um, and like I said at the beginning of the sim, you know, he won the MVP. He had this year in 2023, but I was worried about him becoming like a Spencer Torkelson, just selling out for power. And his ratings are better than what his accomplishments this season would indicate, but. I don't, I don't know what his future holds, um, and I'm worried for it. Harry Ford I talked about coming up. He was hitting very well in AAA after his dumpster fire of a season in 2024. Um, very well in AAA, like I said. Came up for us. He can play everywhere on the, on the diamond almost, um, and I will probably train him to play first and right field. 
eventually. I should have done that this year, but he was, you know, called to do so many things. I didn't want to overwork him. Um, but he'll be, I think, our backup catcher next season, depending on who the, the starter is. I'm done with Dylan Dingler. He was bad. Um, Zach McKinstry filled his role. I kept him up just because he's an above-average bat who can field, um, finishes as an uh, you know above-replacement-level player. Maui Yahuna comes up in 98 plate appearances, so he retains his rookie eligibility, doesn't hit a home run, um, above-average hitter, and not good with the glove, but I think he'll be better in a full sample size next season. He will probably be the starting second baseman. So that does it for the big league club. Um, just some checks around. Carlos Pena is up to a 75 potential. Now we're getting a lot of the uh, ratings inflation towards the end of the year that the scouts in this game like to do. I don't think he's a 75 potential. I think this is really what his ceiling is probably going to be after um, not struggling in AAA but not you know taking it. Uh, Jimmy Crooks, Dingler, Hackenberg. I think I'll keep Crooks around just because he's got a better bat than these two guys. He walks more. Dingler's done. Um, he's had his shot, like I said. Hackenberg, probably will keep him on the 40-man just because he's been so good in AAA. Um, Billy Sullivan, I didn't have the opportunity to call up, but he'll be in the bullpen next year. And Yvonne Moran, Mark Leiter, both do well in AAA. I'll see if I keep them around. Moran's still on the minimum. Conrad Bonert goes up to a 70 potential since we drafted him and, and pitches remarkably, remarkably well in AAA um, in the short time that he has had there. He's moved up from high A to double A, to triple A, and he actually struggled in high A, but um, the scout was telling me to move him up, so I did, and I moved him up again when some injuries opened up some spots. Very happy about that pick. Um, I was worried with the three pitches that he wouldn't come out, but I think having started at a 20 potential and continuing to rise, um, he's one of these guys that's coming out, and he is now the 28th prospect in baseball, which is, if we've been monitoring this, the highest prospect we've ever had. Pena's up to 33. So we have le- legitimate prospects now, and I'm very excited. We drafted them. We didn't trade for them or whatever. Pena's a 19th-round pick. Bonert's a first-round supplemental pick. We have these guys. Pierce George is in the top 100, another first-round pick that we took. So it looks like this 2025 draft, even though it, has, it had some lackluster talent, uh, Noah Franco's 124th best prospect in baseball. Witten is 149th. Um, he struggled in a little bit of minor league play this year, but I'm not too worried. So it, it looks like the 2025 draft class has revitalized our farm system um, into something it wasn't before. And we will see how that stays next season as, as these players um, play more and in bigger sample sizes. But some very good outcomes um, from our drafting. Jackson Davis is up in double A and he's now a 65 potential as our fourth round pick. So we're making some moves here with player development and it's about time. It's uh, been a struggle. And now a lot of these guys are outfielders or bat first prospects, but it's nice to just have them around. We didn't have them before and I think I'm going to start to move off a lot of these veterans. So uh, as we move towards the playoffs, we are scheduled to play the Toronto Blue Jays. And now the White Sox have not won a series, a playoff series, since the 2005 World Series that they won. Um, We haven't won a playoff series, and the two chances we've had in the White Sox in real life didn't before that. So this could be, this wild card series could be the first playoff win in a series in 20 years, now that it is 2025. Here's Bonert, number one pitcher in the International League. Um, Let's look at the standings, though, really quickly. The Blue Jays... Uh, come in as the last wild card. Didn't even display it properly, but they're almost as bad as us. 84 and 78, 79 and 83 Pythagorean record, so we're really a better team than them. Uh, Alejandro Kirk, average kind of hitter, but playing catcher, so his value is more. Um, here's a, a season from Vladdy Jr. that we would expect. Leads the league in home runs with 45. K. Dowdy, okay. Their offense, it seems, is very good. The pitching staff, not so much. he and Santos. Uh, who's the number 23 prospect in baseball, will make the first start for them. He pitched 84 and two-thirds innings this year for Buffalo, or for Toronto, came up from Buffalo. Manoa um, is an average starter at best, and, and same with Barrios. So this is a team we can take advantage of. Their bullpen seems to be very good with Presley, Raul, Rangel, uh, who's the 60th prospect in baseball. 
who's more of a starter type. Um, Romano, William Cuevas. So this is a team that's interesting. They trade for, well, they signed Trevor Rogers, who is, it seems, released by the Rangers after um, not having a good year with them. Leads the major leagues and wins, though, with a 4 six, seven ERA. That's crazy. Um, but that's who we have to face off against. Do they have anyone hurt? Tiedemann's hurt. He'd be their number one starter. Um, so we can take advantage of this team, I think. Bichette's been out all year. He hasn't played. Santiago Espinal. Um, Ian Happ is out. That's a bonus for us. He's been having some good years. Not as good this year as he was last, um, but he's still a player that can compete. So I'm, I'm liking our chances here in this wild card series. And as we look around the rest of the league, Ellie De La Cruz misses out on the first NL Triple Crown since 1937 by three batting points, batting average points. He leads with 55 homers, 130 RBI, 314 average, 9.1 war. He'll walk away at the MVP, but not the Triple Crown. Colt Keith, who is uh, turning out to have a very good career in this simulation, beating him out along with Zach Veen, who in his rookie season steals that away from De La Cruz playing in Coors Field. Uh, we look at Jared Schuster having a good year. Lara again leading the league in strikeouts. Love to see that from my guy. Um, and in the American League, Tyler Birch, 45 saves for the O's. Trevor Rogers again, leads the American League and wins after a very lackluster Drew Hutchinson kind of season. Um, actually, let me see. I want to see that Drew Hutchinson stat line that uh, Foolish Baseball made a video about it. Or is it Hutchinson? Because he won like 17 games one year. Oh, he's still playing. Uh, he won 13 games, didn't lead the league, but he's still at a 5.58 ERA, and that's what you know. Pitcher wins are indicative of absolutely nothing. Uh, not absolutely nothing, but you get what I'm saying. Wilfredo Antunez won the home run derby for the Guardians. He hit 43 homers this season in his rookie year. So some good rookies coming through. Julio Rodriguez, 10.2 WAR, leading in triple slash. Leading an RBI, he almost won the Triple Crown, too. If he hit uh, one more home run, he would have tied with Vladdy Jr. So the young talent in this league is is very good, but the AL, man, <laughs> stinks. Only one team wins 90 games, the Orioles, after losing in the World Series last year. Um, they're the favorites, it seems, to win it this year, at least win the American League pennant again. Uh, Mariners win the division at 89 games, 88, 86, 84. The Braves on the NL side are the only 100-win team in Major League Baseball, which harkens back to the days of old when, when 100 win seasons weren't as common as they are these days um, with how many teams choose to tank. But maybe with this expanded wild card slot, more teams are going for it. So I'm happy to see that. Anyways, I'll check back in with you guys. Um, the video will be over if we lose this playoff series. So spoiler alert if, if the YouTube video is about to end. Um, if not, I'll be back with the next series.